How do everyone, I'm Jamie and welcome back to my garage. For this project I wanted to use up some scrap pieces of material I had and to try not spend any money. To start off I cut two pieces of plywood to be the top and the bottom of the bench. These measured 90 by 55 centimeters. These pieces were too big for my table saw so I had to cut them down with my circular saw. Beautiful. I was recently given a retro router which I was able to practice with on this project. It's a Bosch 600 POF 600 Ace from the 1990s I think. It was my first router and the lesson I learned is nothing is ever free. There is usually a price to pay somewhere. The router came with no bits so I bought a cheap pack of bits with the idea to replace the ones I use the most with better quality bits. Cutting out the top and bottom with the circular saw didn't give me two identical pieces, so I stuck them together with double sided tape, clamped them to my bench and used a flush trim bit to make the pieces the same by taking multiple passes with the router. Next I marked out where I wanted the centre divider to go and used a scrap piece to get the correct width and clamped the two pieces together so I could cut a groove out at the same time giving me two identical pieces. I took several passes with the router, backing out the cut after each pass and checking the fit with a scrap piece and adjusting the makeshift fence accordingly. This is where I ran into some problems using the router. I didn't get a tight fit along the cut, but I can hide these later on as you'll see in the video. I marked out where I wanted rabbits for the two sides and back panel to go. These were the thickness of the plywood. Again, I had issues with the router setting here. I could lock the depth into place, but this meant I had to make the cut in one pass, potentially burning out my new bits rather quickly. There is a depth screw on the router which I set to allow me to plunge up to halfway into the plywood but I relied on this too much because when making a cut the depth would change and I wouldn't get a consistent depth of cut, sometimes going too deep. I took several passes using a straight bit. I then marked and cut down the centre piece which just happened to be slightly too big for my cross cut sled. This meant I had to trim it down to width, also using my circular saw. And here I made another mistake. Oh, you plonker! So what I've accidentally gone and done is cut out two centre pieces instead of two end pieces um, and the centre piece is actually a little bit shorter than the top, the bottom and the two sides. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I don't know, let's have a look. The sides were supposed to go to the back on the top and the bottom. So I don't think it's going to be as bad as what I first thought. Um, I haven't cut the back panels yet, I'm going to do uh, two uh, split down the centre piece. Uh, but instead I can just cut them two running the entire width of the bench because I don't have any plywood big enough for a single sheet. Uh, we will have at the back plywood edge, exposed plywood edges um, but I'm going to put some trim around the sides um, so that's going to hide that anyway. I glued and pinned the panels into position with the help of some trusty dumbbell clamps.
I gotta say, that was stressful. I clamped the bench together, drilled countersunk pilot holes and fixed with 30mm screws. I marked out and cut down two pieces of plywood for the back. These were attached with glue and screws. I cut some 40mm strips of plywood down to make a frame on the base of the bench. These would be to raise it so I could add trim. These were attached with glue and pinned into place before drilling countersunk pilot holes and fixing with 30mm screws as well as being careful not to hit previously placed brad nails. For the trim, I had a couple of 2.4 metre lengths of CLS timber lying around. I trimmed off the rounded edges at the table saw, then trimmed them to around 35mm wide strips. I resawed these down to around 12mm thickness using the bandsaw. I prefer using the bandsaw here because I can't get a true 90 degree cut with a table saw. I made a 45 degree cut at the mitre saw, marked where I wanted the other cut to go, cut that and attached with bread nails. I worked my way around the bench attaching each piece and checking the vertical pieces for plumb. I filled the nail holes with filler and used decorator's cork to fill where I had gaps from the router. Once dried, I sanded the entire bench with 180 grit using the orbital sander and broke the edges by hand. For paint, I used a grey cold swanky pants from French Chic. I cut in the corners with a brush before deciding to paint it all with a brush. I do prefer applying paint with a roller, but I was quite surprised with how little brush streaks I had from using a decent paint brush and this paint. I applied two coats, lightly sanded in between coats, once dried with 400 grit. For the top, I didn't have any stock left over to make one, two or even three panels big enough to be glued up together and this bench is for the wife. So I headed out to B&Q, put my hand in my pocket and bought a 300 by 2.4 metre furniture board. I cut this in half, glued the two halves together and wiped away the excess with a damp rag. Once dried, I trimmed one end straight and marked up the other end at 92cm. I cut this with a circular saw then made a mark at 56cm for the width and cut this as well. I ran into a bit of a placement issue here and had to move the piece out to avoid hitting the clamp. This left me with a finished piece leaving a 1cm overhang around three sides and sitting flush at the back. There was a slight bit of damage to one edge but I could just sand this out. I sanded the whole top with 180 grit and breaking over the sharp edges too. And here you can see the damaged edge has gone. To finish the top I used a clear Danish oil. I applied a liberal coat with a lint free cloth and buffed to a shine after about 15 minutes. Once dried, I clamped the top onto the base after checking for an equal overhang and pilot drilled holes before securing with 30mm screws. I used four screws in each side. With the help of the wife, I could then relocate the bench into her craft room and call this project done. This was a challenging, but a really enjoyable project for me. It was my first time using a router and learning some new techniques. And despite the loose groove and rabbit cuts, uh, this bench has turned out really solid. There's no flex in it. It's really solid. And I think it'll hold up for a good amount of time. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I would properly appreciate it if you tap that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.